Hello Biology 230 at Tuskegee University. This is Dr. Griffin with video 5. Yes, this is the last video for module 9 that covers chapter 14 in your Campbell Biology textbook. It's simply two slides. The first one is just reviewing or covering two major forms of fetal testing that you should be very familiar with. The first one is being amniocentesis. In amniocentesis, Essentially, the physician or healthcare provider would be actually taking a sample by inserting a needle um, into, the, into the amniotic fluid and they're getting actually samples of the amniotic fluid. Typically, amniocentesis can be done during the 14th to 16th week of pregnancy. And the reason amniocentesis um, is done is either through some blood tests or if the mother has any. Um, risk factors such as being over 35 or other um, traits that might be a risk factor for having certain genetic disorders um, in developing fetus, one would probably prescribe um, the mother to have an amniocentesis done so they could run biochemical and genetic tests to determine if indeed there were any neurogenetic or genetic disorders that the fetus may have. And these biochemical and genetic tests can be performed within several hours of sampling the amniotic fluid. However, karyotyping and actually looking for chromosomal disorders can only be done within several weeks after amniocentesis is performed. And that's because you don't have a large number of cells present in, amnios um, in the amniotic fluid. And so you actually have to culture these cells that you get out of the amniotic fluid, fluid through amniocentesis, have time for these cells to grow in culture and allow for robust karyotyping to be performed to actually look at the staining patterns of the chromosomes. It's the test for any chromosomal disorders such, such as Down syndrome. An alternative measure for testing for genetic tests or genetic disorders of the fetus is chorionic villus sampling or CVS. CVS can be done somewhat sooner in pregnancy or earlier in pregnancy. It's between the 8th and 10th week of pregnancy. And you actually are sampling and removing some tissue um, from the chorionic villus. Um, so you're going to go through the cervix and actually get this tissue um, and actually get some fetal cells from the chorionic villus. Biochemical and genetic tests can be performed within several hours, similar to the amniocentesis. The main difference is that karyotyping, actually looking at the staining patterns of chromosomes, can be performed on the cells immediately because you have a high density of cells in the chorionic villus uh, that actually can look at and determine if there are chromosomal disorders in a developing fetus. And so you actually can know the chromosomal results a lot sooner. Uh, there have been some reports to show that there is an increased risk in total pregnancy loss uh, with chorionic villus sampling occurring in the second trimester. This is being compared to amniocentesis. I've given you a link here to kind of look that over of some of the risk factors, the reported risk factors comparing the two different, the two major types of fetal testing. Um, there, are may, there are new forms of testing being um, done and actually tested now. Um, so I'm just looking at for biomarkers that are, are looking um, of the mother's blood. Um, there is some shedding of fetal cells uh, that it gets exchanged um, from the placenta into the maternal blood. So there are some ways of actually looking at cells in the maternal blood, just taking a simple blood test from the mother. However, the number of the cells is not high. But again, you could culture these cells but it would take several weeks to grow if you want to do some major genetic or major chromosomal tests. Uh, so this is just two forms of fetal testing. It's associated with um, Mendelian genetics in Chapter 14 because this is how genetic counselors, OBGYN, or obstetricians and gynecologists use tools to actually consult and tell um, mothers and fathers the risk factors for different genetic um, disorders that are possible in the developing fetus. 
And with that, we are going to conclude Module 9 with the objectives. I'm just going to read them really quickly. Number one, to utilize breeding patterns to determine the mode of inheritance for a trait. To employ the law of segregation and law of independent assortment to predict the phenotypic and genotypic ratios. To use Punnett squares to predict offspring from monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. To apply the basic rules of probability or basic laws of probability to determine genotypic and phenotypic ratios. To recognize non-Mendelian phenomena that underlie complex inheritance patterns. To predict genotypes and phenotypes using pedigrees and to be able to discuss the utility, strengths, and caveats of amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. And with that, I'm going to conclude Module 9, that's Chapter 14 in your Campbell Biology textbook. If you have any questions, if you cannot do these things well, please contact me. Email me. My email is right there in the PowerPoint. Feel free also encourage you to post questions on the discussion board. Stop by during my office hours to print it on the syllabus or email me to make an appointment. This concludes the lecture videos for Module 9 for Biology 230 at Tuskegee University. This is Dr. Griffin signing off.